Man, oh man, oh man, it has already been on fire before you could get the mics recording. Welcome to another episode of Dirty Mo Doe. We have non-betting Tims. We have a story to go with that. In the lower corner of my Zoom, he just drops his head in shame. I have producer Trav. Trav, what do we got today? A bullet. We're back to the bullet. The mountains are blue in the, uh, in the Trav castle. And then we have the professor... Still no new backgrounds, kind of boring. Thought the kids would have some new artwork. We have nothing in the background. But I can't believe we even got him on the pod. I thought after the performance of the predictor, he was going public. I thought it was an IPO coming. <laughs> the predictor was on fire this week. Totally on fire. Well, go ahead. How many of what? Just go ahead. I mean, just take the, get, the, get this right out of the way early. Just get the bragging done. It was a great day for the predictor. Of the seven top ten finishers, they were all predicted in the top ten. When we predicted the top 13, we're all finished top ten. The two outliers were Blaney and Chastain. Okay. So now let's convert that into what really matters. Tim, did you make any paper? Oh, yeah. We made some paper. Cashed on two winners. Two winners. Two winners. Okay, let's tell the story. Here it is, folks. I'm sitting on my couch watching the race. First of all, everybody's bitching about Easter racing. Um, I heard Dale say he'll never go, and I appreciate that. I think I have no problem with Easter, and here's why. Because they're sports. So I heard the other podcast, the podcast with, um, help me the, out, it was teardown. Bianchi and... The Teardown. The Teardown. So I'm with Bianchi on this. Like, if you don't like it, don't go. If you don't like it, don't watch. That's okay. As soon as you try to make it great for everyone, you make it awful for everyone. Like, it's okay Here's my example. I'm going to use golf. If you want to see pristine, go to Augusta. I was just fortunate enough to play Pinehurst number two this week on this little media thing we did. If you want to see non-pristine, go to Pinehurst for the U.S. Open. Right, It's going to be a bloodbath. Got these little turtle bat greens. My point is the same golf fan may not like both, and that's okay. So I feel like that's this way with the racing. I feel it's this way with the schedule. And I'm okay with Easter. I like Easter night. I think that's more respectful for the teams. I like it being close. The teams flew back and forth. Half the guys didn't even have hotel rooms. They came home and spent Easter morning with their kids. So, look, I'm okay with it. I'm sorry. I understand how it upsets some. Um, and I'm okay that it affects the ratings or the, or the viewership or how many buy tickets. But I'm okay with racing on Easter. There's my every, rant. Every sport does. I mean, I remember the one year – uh, NBA free agency started on July 4th and Kevin Durant announced he's going to the Golden State Warriors and it threw off everybody's day. Like, welcome to the sports world. You work on holidays, nights and weekends. Can't have it every way. You, you can't say, hey, man, I work at sports. It's awesome. But I also don't want to work the weekends. Like, that's not how it works. Even Russell, who hated it, the professor got over it. I went. So let's get back to Tim's uh, two words. All right, so I'm sitting on my couch. We have this text. We're firing back and forth. I'm on the professor about stuff. And all of a sudden, final stage is rolling. Hamlin runs long, which means he doesn't green five pet as early. He's going to have a long. I'm like, man, I think this might work. I don't know. For the record, I'm a short pit guy. I've always been a short pit guy. It's kind of like a signature. You know, strategies are one thing, but you also kind of, it's like whether you, you know, you're just comfortable with it. So I'm like, I'm a short pit guy. Then I watch the lap times. I'm like seven, eight laps in. I'm like, what I say, Russ? I said, the 11's the winner. Now, listen, the risk was getting caught up in traffic. So I hit old Tim's, and I'm like, Tim's, what's your Denny Hamlin live bet? And you took it, right? I did. I did. As soon as I went to take it, the odds dropped, but I still took it. So what Tim's didn't tell us is he cashed out Logano to take it. So you got plus money on Logano, a live bet to win. So tell the fans how that all went. Yeah, so I was checking all race. That was my strategy. Try to cash out some of these win bets that I went crazy with because I woke up Sunday and said, I'm going to bet the winner. I don't care who it is or how many bets I got to place. But uh, Logano was like third or second, really was like not going to win, but was there. And they gave me a really nice cash out option. So I cashed that out and then used that to bet Denny live. And it worked out. But I had Denny and Truex on that final restart. So I was just hoping they didn't wreck each other. So now take this into account. So now he tells us that he's cashed out Logano and he took Hamlin. And I'm over here going, great call, great call, great call. Hamlin gets to Logano and the brakes like, can't pass him. Mm -hmm. And Tim's is like, I think Logano might get me here. I'm like, man, this would be a bad beat of bad beats. Either way, we had great podcast content. Now, luckily for Tim's, it was a winning podcast. So, so Tim successfully won, think about this, two 
race winner bets with only one race winner actually winning. Hey, Maybe but plus. Tim's, did you win uh, any uh, winning bets on Saturday? No, I was busy Saturday. Wait, I don't understand. We had the the predict. We had the winner predicted. It was a and long. you asked Saturday morning who to who to bet. <laughs> Would you trip and fall into a keg of beer? What happened? Well, I was playing golf, and we did this thing where you, it's called reverse mulligans, where you uh, if your buddy hits a good shot, you can just shotgun a beer and erase the shot, and he has to do it again. <laughs> so. Uh, well, if you played with Russell, you'd be stone sober because he never has a good <laughs> shot. <laughs> so let's just say we were <laughs> we were shotgunning beers a lot and often and early to get the blood going. And uh, I thought it was a night race, so I thought I had plenty of time. And uh, was shocked to hear the race had already started at like 3 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, missed that one. <laughs> you know you know why people should listen in? Because we're just honest. We admit when we mess up. Listen, Trav, how about some winners? My 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 – Social media is full. Here is my f- my favorite favorite bet we've had submitted so far from Andrew Stockert. Maybe uh, forgive me, I messed up your last name. Uh, he bet ten cents uh, for Martin Truex, uh, William Byron, and Larson to finish uh, top ten. So he cashed thirty eight cents. He bet another ten cents for Brad Keselowski, Chris Busher, top ten. Love that. The guy just wants to live a little. Uh, Tyler Eretz, he put two units on Hamlin to win. Also, Toyota Manufacturer, uh, Chief to 9362. Truex or Denny Hamlin to win. He cashed that. Uh, who we had? Blake Harvey had Chandler Smith and Denny Hamlin winning separate bets, not parlayed. Uh, Tanner Flynn had Chris Buescher and Bad- Brad Kozlowski top 10. Like, our people are listening to us. That was the us. one I was most proud of, I won't lie. Uh, no, uh, I, I, when I listened back to last week's pod, I think what I was most proud of was the double dip in the RFK top 10. Mm-hmm. We were watching that because somebody was like, oh, they're going to pass him for 11th. Oh, no, now they're back to 10th. Oh, oh. And then the caution came out. And I'm like, I don't know, boys. I don't know. Speaking of which, I'm going back to our text thread. You almost cashed out Larson before the pit stop. Would he have been positive too? Was that a triple winner? Pot- potential yeah. triple winner? Yeah, I thought it was going to come down to Larson or Truex, so I, I kept it, thinking I might get a better number. I don't think that's a bad. I don't think that's a bad shot. Yeah. Yeah. It, especially but, I mean, with having that first pit stall. Yeah, and he beat. I think at the time he beat him out too, so it was, uh, it was a good decision at the time. But yeah, Larson, I almost cashed it out before, and I would have got a third positive one. That would have been awesome. Um, all right. Well, listen, short track again. Um, going to Martinsville, my favorite track. Look, here's the thing. I'm just going to shoot you straight. I had no idea Bristol was going to be the absolute exciting tire mess that it was. It was so captivating. I loved it. It was the same tire Bristol fall and spring this year. Martinsville, we're kind of looking at the same thing. Same tire as we had last fall. I have major concerns that it's going to be cool and never put rubber down. It's going to do the opposite of what happened at Bristol, and I think the tires aren't going to wear. Um, I think it's going to be right around the curb, and this is going to be a running game race. I know that is unpopular, but this is one. When I say running game, Tim's, I mean – inch by inch. If you're running seventh and it takes 100 laps to get to fifth, you can't just lose your mind and give spots up. Like, it's not going to work. I could be wrong. I was totally wrong on Bristol. Um, so that means you better qualify well. You better have efficient pit stops. And I think that goes to teams that make very few mistakes that can be efficient. That's my lead into the model and the predictor. I'm looking at it. Professor, if you didn't have this guy at the top, I wanted to know what exactly you used for the model Danny Hamlin leads the predictor by a solid seven points. The guys won at Martinsville a ton. Uh, I think you have to give him the respect. Yeah, but he hasn't won there since 2015. So that, that would be my only hesitation. But but definitely he's at the top with Larson. And, and going into this weekend, I think um, we have to think about Hendrick having their 40th anniversary there this weekend. I think they have 1,500 employees going up there, past and present. So... If you think a Hendrick car is not going to win this weekend, you're, you've lost it. I think just think a Hendrick car is going to win this weekend. Um, so I have Larson second in that model. And I think that Ham- Hamlin and Larson are neck and neck on the top. And then you have Bell, Blaney, Truex, William Byron, and Joey Logano as tier two. So let's talk about the Hendrick thing because NASCAR is, is full of stories. I'm not going to go through all the history at Martinsville. There are some great days there. There's some awful days at Martinsville for the company. Uh, but the story goes that this was going to be their last race, and Jeff Bodine went up there. And I've heard the story from Rick Hendrick himself, so I feel pretty confident this is fair. He didn't even go. He went to church with Mrs. Hendrick, 
and, and the all-star racing car, Jeff Bodine, went to victory lane, and thus Hendrick Motorsports continued into what it was today. That's the nickel version of the story. Uh, it's 40 years. It's an amazing thing, and I am with the professor. This is like, you know, sports does it, right? Sports creates storylines, so I agree that, that it's a Hendrick car. Um, I don't know. Something just makes me feel it's a Hendrick car as well. And they won 28 times there, so, like, think about that. Like you got if the Hendrick car goes as early as Denny Hamlin goes, he'll lead every lap. <laughs> no? Was that too soon? So did he go early? My guy Truex should have won is what you're telling me? He absolutely went early, but it's not his job to call him. This isn't golf. You don't self-referee. NASCAR has to penalize him. Also, weren't other cars not playing by the, the rules with the restart? No, I don't think anybody else was egregious. Nobody laid back? No. I don't think – actually, by the time they got to the restart zone, I thought everybody was pretty close. There were cars laying back. Yes. So here's the problem with restarts in general. There's a lot of gray, but I do think the restart zone is not gray. It's pretty well defined by the painted lines on the racetrack. I don't have a problem with the no call because I don't buy a ticket to watch refs. You know, it's like when a receiver throws his hands up looking for the flag, you know, on the last second passing play. Like, come on, man. You're not going to get that play. Or when you drive to the lane trying to get a foul and you don't get it in the last seconds of a basketball game. Like, I'm not here to see the refs. Um, now, I'm a little concerned what could happen to this because there's no doubt in my mind Denny Hamlin was before the restart zone. I was okay with the no call as a sports fan. As an analyst, he absolutely was outside the box. NASCAR didn't call it. So now if I make driver or crew chief, I'm going to have a conversation with, hey, does this mean you're going to call it differently? Is this the new? So it's a conversation that's going to continue. But we digress. Do so you Denny think Hamlin, Kyle Larson – Tier one. Hold on. Do you think it's different on a road course, like where they have five minutes before the race is over? Like they could have analyzed that and could have black flagged them. They could have looked at that data, all That's the an data. Watch question. It. Yeah, like if we were at Pocono and you had three minutes for the race to finish versus Richmond. That's an yep. interesting question. Um, I hadn't thought about that. I'll give you some credit for. Uh, I bet it does. I bet, yeah, I bet they probably take more time to look at it and maybe a call is made. I, I think that's a fair assessment, which it shouldn't be. Well, you just have way more time to, to look at it. That's like, kind of like saying, do you think the home and the away team gets refereed different with the crowd involvement? And I don't know that answer, but I think I do understand what you're saying. It's a, it's a great question. Um, look, I think with technology, we need to decide as a sport whether we want this to be a human element thing or whether we want this to be a technological thing. My point would be the in and out in tennis. I don't watch a lot of tennis, but you see the little highlight of the ball skipping. The Hawkeye. You know, what's it called? The Hawkeye. It's the same the thing we have in, in NASCAR. So we, well, I didn't know that. So it's the same. So Hawkeye is how is pit roads officiated for everybody that tells you if your car is in or whatever. So I'm of the opinion that there's this technology, with, probably with the same company, that can be used to referee the restart zone. Um, I think that's what I would like to see personally. What I'd like to see is it implemented where, you know, you're not allowed to accelerate until your nose gets to the white line, kind of like a false start in a sprint. You know what I'm saying, Tims? And the drivers all know, like, hey, man, this is black and white. And, and Because, look, when Hawkeye first came to pit road, there were all these penalties that I felt would never have been called with the human eye. Hitting a third pit box jumping over the pit wall too soon by like a millisecond, but you're called because it's black and white and the computer, the AI says you're over and here's the picture and there's no defense. So we have all the driver telemetry. We have the driver's location. We have GPS. We have all this. I would love to see this. Now look, the drivers would adjust. You can't just turn the switch on and then catch everybody and go, ha ha ha, we got you. But if you switch to tech, you know, to like this being cre refereed by a computer, then you, as a driver, Maybe the zone could be a little longer, 20% longer, because I do think the zone right now is used a little in gray, so it acts a little bigger. Make the zone 20% longer and say, hey, guys, we are not, this is not a human interest call. We have the front row cars, we have the driver, and, you know, it's a simple, once you get over 10% throttle or a certain acceleration, if you're outside the line, it's a, it's a red light on the dash. I'd be okay with that. I'd like that. So basically the same thing as, like, your pit road speed, you wouldn't be allowed to go faster yeah. than a certain well i think it's just a, it's an acceleration thing right like i'd have to g get smarter get with some way smarter people than me but basically it's like hey here's the rate of acceleration in every racetrack when you step on the gas right so we'll give you a little leeway you could do it in math it wouldn't be very hard to do right it like 
These guys don't ease into the restart. When they go, they go. Your bracket is most likely busted, but that doesn't mean the fun is over because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Make sure you stick around to hear what bets we've got going for this weekend. You can bet on everything from the money line to the over-unders to which team will cut down the nets. All on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Take the court with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash dough to get started. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 21 and over and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. All right, let's jump this out then. We got Hamlin and Larson, second tier, Bell, Blaney, Truex, Byron, Logano. Uh, I'm all good with all that. Busher, Elliott, Briscoe, Wallace, Chastain, Gibbs, Keselowski. Now we're into the top 15. Bowman, Priest, Reddick, Barry, Kyle Busch. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't just put your thumb down. You got to audibly say it so the people hear it. There was there was some of that text thread that had Kyle Busch as a tier three driver this weekend. Uh, well, his teammate Austin Dillon right behind him, new crew chief, out of the bullpen for I think the I don't know fifth time in his career. Justin Alexander is back on top of the pit box for Austin Dillon, McDowell, Jones, Gregson, Nemechek, Suarez, Sindrick, Lejoy. A little surprise being this far down. Um, Gillen, Stenhouse, Burton, Hosevar. So on and so forth. Let's hear it, Tim's. You see the predictor. Tell me where your heart is. I, I like the predictor with Denny Hamlin. I think he's two for two this year on short tracks, so why not make it three for three? Um, I like Logano this week. I think last week was the run he needed to kind of, and with him being second and third basically the whole race, that impressed me enough to back him this week. But the guy that I think is the long shot that could really get it done is Josh Berry. And Dale said it on the download that you win your first race at a track, you just run well there. And I don't know, that kind of got me. He hooked me on that one a little bit. I think Josh Berry's a good long shot here. Let's talk Josh Berry. So here's my opinion. I think Josh Berry has the talent. I know Rodney Childers can win. My concern is that this organization hasn't won in so long that – uh, like last week, they were good until they weren't. So, so my point is a pit stop. Uh, you, you know, are, they haven't been under the microscope, so say they jump into the microscope, right? Say they run as good as we think they can up front all day long. Can they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big teams? Can they keep up on pit road? I don't know that answer. That is my concern. When's the last time SHR won? 2023 sometime. They won a whole bunch of 2023, and then they didn't win at all in 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. They you won in 2022. And then they went blanked in 2023. Well, hell, we've only had one non-HMS and JGR winner this year, right? Yeah, yeah they finished pretty, second and fourth here last year. Uh, yeah, no, you're not here. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's been 55 races since they've won. Well, listen, and it's a long shot for a reason. Right? Like, yeah. I, like, what are you getting for odds on them? 2,800, uh, there you go. 2,800, yeah. Which is actually a little lower than I think I'd want. You know, that is funny. I thought he'd be like a 35-ish. Yeah, me too. But I think last week he ran well enough that they adjusted a little bit. Oh, that is true. I wonder if last week did shorten them some. I bet they did. Um. So what about Barry for top 10 then? We'll just stay with him for a second. Ugh. I mean, it's even money. It's kind of the same as last week with Logano, right? But... I don't know. I, again, I'd like him. If he was 130, maybe take a shot at him, 150. But 100, I mean, even money, I don't know. That's that's respect. But So I actually have another guy that I think I'm looking at for, for uh, out of the SHR camp, and I think his odds are longer, and he has as good a chance as Josh Berry, and that's Ryan Priest. Mm. Qualified monster here last year. Sped out of the number one pit stall because it was moved back to number two, which I'm not going to pick on him. The mistake happens, right? Happened. Christopher Bell got busted speeding this week. Now, he couldn't recover. He was gone. Wah, wah, wah. But there was a lot learned, right? And I'm just saying that 
much like Barry, another short track guy. So if you put Barry and him, we'll call him in a bucket. We'll even give Barry, a, say, a 5% advantage. Um, I was looking at the predictor. Where do you have him on the predictor? You have Barry in 18th. And you have pre-16th. Okay, so the predictor has him, we'll call it, throw a blanket over him. The books disagree. That's why I'm having this conversation, right? This is more of a uh, Barry 28 to 1, pre-60 to 1. Top 10 money, Barry even money, pre-2 to 1. Yeah, I I had Priest for a top ten. I think that was almost a lock for me, just because he's because of last year, because he was really good out front. And I think if you qualify well, you'll more than likely stay up well. If you stay up there too, if you don't screw up on pit road. And my monster long shot top ten. I mean, it's a monster and it's a long shot. Is Lejoy at eighteen to one? I know all of his top tens come at speedway races, and I know he hasn't got the finishes at Martinsville. But this team is, we talk a lot about information in the predictor. This is not the team he's driven for. It might have the same name. I was just looking at their shop the other day. I was up there for a meeting. They showed me around their new building. They've got people everywhere. They've tripled the amount of people in the shop. Like, Spire is publicly out there talking about how big they are, how much they've grown. They have finances now. Corey talks about it on his podcast. He finished dead last at Richmond, uh, which is his statistically probably worst short track. Look. Do I think it's going to happen? No. I wouldn't do it at 5-1, to one, but we're talking 18-1. to one. I mean, that's like the same odds, basically, if Josh Berry went in the race. I'd, I'd go a flyer. Russ, what's uh, LaJoy's history there? I see you nodding your head. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> well, it's not going to be good and get 18-1 to one for a top 10. I mean, these kind of go hand in hand, guys. This is, let me give you a little hint. Well, it, his best it finish is 18th there. Right. What's Josh Berry's best finish? Well, he's won there. <laughs> I, I don't. He's not. Cup, he's not raced there in Cup. If you want to say that, then you could say that Corey LaJoy won there. Didn't you win there in a modified? I mean, how far out are we gonna go? Are we gonna check late model races, the Arca races. We're gonna go to K and N East. Like, how far back down this road are we gonna go? Are they gonna get out there and jog around the half mile and see who can run the fastest? What kind of bullshit answer is he won there. <laughs> well, he's won there in Xfinity. Okay, that race is on Saturday. This is, we're talking Sunday, bud. We're talking different race. I, I just think you're better off taking like an Eric Jones. You sound like an NFL GM. Those for a lot of touchdowns in college. We should draft him. Yep, that works out so well all the time. Wouldn't you rather take an Eric Jones, though? Like, your odds are a little less, but, you know, if you're going to take a flyer like that. Okay, then... I, you could talk me into that. God, I hate when he's right. Eric Jones, 9-1. to one. Well, give me like Jones' or... best finish there. LaJoy's was 18th. What's, what's Jones's? Eighth. How many starts? That's 10 spots better. How many starts, Russ? You don't get to just tell your side of the story. 14. So one top 10 and 14 starts. He's got, he's got five finishes better than Corey LaJoy does there. And Corey has how many starts there? Nine? 12. All right, there you go. So you like Jones at 9-1. to one. Or, like, even back there, if you're talking those odds, like McDowell. Like Talk he doesn't to have to one. Yeah, he doesn't have great finishes there either. But if you're gonna if you're gonna throw away money, I'd rather throw it away on that. So <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy I could throw away money on. Oh whoa 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 whoa! I'll take Lejoy over McDowell this weekend. Bet done. Hold on. What's the bet? What's the, What's bet? the bet? I could tell yeah. you what the bet is. The bet is we are gonna be in Iowa, our first NBC race. It's a town I've never been to. And Russ is buying dinner on Thursday night. We're going in a day early to check the track. And he's buying me a nice steak, a nice glass of wine. Not going to get a bottle out of him because he's too cheap to buy a bottle. And this is Iowa dinner on Russ. But this is I either pay for all the Racing Insights guys or Russell pays for all the NBC booth talent. Oh, yeah. That's the bet. <laughs> Ooh. That's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. At, at Iowa, we're also going to Iowa State, and we're going to kick field goal, too. I'm making money left and right in Iowa. I can't wait. <laughs> I got to get my money back. Write that one down. LaJoy <laughs> over McDowell. It's actually I, – I, I, mean, I, I don't love the bet, but I do think it's going to be a close battle. I got a guy for you. It's my lock of the weekend. <laughs> Hold on. You know, have you ever seen uh, what Jimmy Fallon he does a thank you notes? That's the move yeah. I'm making with my pen right now. And go. 
Austin Dillon top ten, seven to one. My no. pen just ran out of ink. The, <laughs> new, no, I... the new crew chief boost. It happens when you get a new coach mid year in in any other sport. You win that first game out. They gotta impress. The new crew chief boost. He's not gonna win, but I could see him finishing tenth. I bet him yes. last week. He wasn't even in the race, I felt like. So this is better odds. And he's got yes. a new crew chief he does well with. I, I'm taking the shot. Richard Childress Racing has two top tens a whole year. And you think Austin Dillon's going to get one at Martinsville? Oh, yeah. He's got a secret weapon, Justin Alexander. I will say that every time they put Justin Alexander on the pit box, they run better. <laughs> it really is amazing. I, it's a new crew I, I mean, they got, what, four wins together or something like that, yet they keep kicking him to the curb. <laughs> I mean, he can't stay. I mean, I don't get it, but he, he can win a race or he can give me some money in the first race out, I think. I, I, that's it. I, you've really got me into these crazy-ass props. Should we go down to these props? Let's go to the crazy props. Yeah. Drivers to lead a lap over six and a half. That has got to be an over. <laughs> you said this before. <laughs> six and a half drivers? It's 500 effing laps. I, I agree with you, but it's what do the like, numbers say? That well, the problem is that goes directly with yellows because if there's no yellows, you're not going to get very many leaders. The average is is like six lately. You know, we had nine in this race last year, but six in this six in the fall. I'd take any over. Minus one fifty though. I know. I, I think I might take the under because this is a race that I'm not going to be able to watch. So it's like I can bet the under and not be worried about like not having fun watching the race. It's easier to bet the under when you're not watching. Drivers on the lead lap finish, 21 and a half. I'm taking the over because if we do get yellows, it's like every, everybody gets a lap back. It's like Oprah's Christmas gifts. You, you, and your four buddies all get your lap back. Yeah. There was 12 on the lead lap last fall. I know. Well, they went green all the way to the finish. No. Man, you saw how quick they threw that yellow for the eight touch in the wall? This baby ain't going green. No, 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 no. It would have really helped help the predictor if they didn't throw the caution for Larson, too. Most laps led by any driver over under basically 200. 199.5. That's an interesting one. I'm taking under. What do the numbers say? Both races last year were under. I like the under. By, like, how much? You probably had three different guys lead over 100 laps. Yeah. Now, the previous... The previous ten were all over two hundred. Over. What's yeah, the right. ne so next mm -hmm. gen? It's mo it's been basically under two and two, two and two. Okay. It's right at it. Average speed. I'm not betting on that. That's the dumbest thing I've seen yet. Um, <laughs> now hold on. Why is that? Uh, why is that dumb? Because you're just betting on how many caution laps you're going to have. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what are the numbers? Do you, can you figure that one out? I mean, hey, it might be dumb, but if it's a, if if the books have it wrong. Okay, real simple then. This is the best way to finish it out. How many laps were run under yellow last year in the fall? Well, what I can get to the average speed. What What's your bet over and over? 74 and a half. 74 and a half. <laughs> That's, it was 74 and 75 last year. Russ, <laughs> stop sending them your f***ing information, please. <laughs> I'm just going to quit doing this freaking podcast. I'm just going to have Russ get on here and tell me. He could get on here and say, okay, guys, this is all the I sent to the books. Um, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> That's a dumb bet. I don't like that bet. Here's why I don't like the bet. How are you going to find that? Like, you can't root. Here's why I don't like it. Because you can't root for it. For rooting interest, that's why I think it's a dumb bet. Yeah, you need to know what you're rooting for and that's see that, it. You, yeah. you, that's like betting on some obscure prop that they don't record live, I'm like, well, that takes out the whole damn fun of it. Now, number of lead changes and drivers not completing 200 laps. <laughs> that was a thrill. Good. I will say this. I'm surprised at the odds. Drivers not completing 200 laps. The over is the heavy favorite at one of the slowest tracks we go to. Now, it only takes one radiator, one stack up. Well, it didn't happen last week. I would have thought this week it would have been it kind of reversed. I feel like Richmond, we almost had it with a spin. They can climb up the track, smack the wall, and that's it. You're done. Here, I think they could just 
spin turn around and they usually just keep going. I get no the one thing, jumped but... off their couch more than Tim's when Suarez was <laughs> pedaling that thing through one and two. Rear tires smoking. I wish I could have been there live because I feel like he jumped up and he was like, here yeah. it comes. A oh, couple yeah. hundred yards, I'm cashing a ticket. I mean, he is smacking that wall. It sucked. We, we all thought when they were racing in the rain that we had a chance. How about these then? The double top ten props. That's where we got RFK to the pay window. Let's start with this. There's no way, first of all, I'm taking a double top prem- Top 10 prop. I'm starting to sound like Russell. At Hamlin Bell, Hamlin Larson, Hamlin Truex, Hamlin Blaney at minus 150. You know how easy it is to mess this up on a restart? No way. So I got to get to at least even money or better. Um, if you believe it's a Hendrick day, even money starts with Truex Blaney, but then it goes to Larson Byron. Uh, that's the only double Hendrick car, right? I, I like that one and the Logano Larson one. So then Larson's your kingpin on both. He'll probably run 11th. Um, Logano's Logano's been top 10 there the last nine races. You know why I do like the Logano thing? Because I just said that it's going to be a game of inches, and that is Logano's M.O. Like, Logano's M.O. is not the best car. It's not the this. Him and Paul Wolf, they, you know, they kind of, you know what they do? They race like Joe Flacco quarterbacks. You know, like he's got that veteran. You know what I'm saying, Tim's Like if a receiver's over, yeah. he's going to hit him. But if you're expecting him, this guy, to get out of the pocket and run for 30, he ain't your guy. No. And, Off and script, I feel like that's Logano, thing. right? He's just going to, like, inch your way. He just doesn't go away. Yeah, I would agree with that. If they had three championships, I'd have gave him Tom Brady, but they only got, he's only got two. Yeah. yeah. Still elite. Still elite. Elite, for sure. Uh, let's talk about long shots. Do we like... I don't like Keselowski Gibbs. No. Briscoe Elliott plus 160 is an interesting one. Yeah, I kind of like that one. There's another one with Briscoe I like. It's the Briscoe Busher plus 300. I feel like Busher's just a top 10 machine. Briscoe, I think, is pretty good here. That might be worth a shot. You know, my man Professor showed me his new tool I was playing with before we get on here. Did you know of all drivers that have 43 starts in the last two years? Chris Buescher only has two DNFs. Really? Corey LeJoy has one. He's the only guy with less. Wow, that's even more shocking to me. So, like, the guy just, to your point, he runs laps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, that's worth a shot to me. I think the Chase Elliott Briscoe one, though, I think that the Hendrick 40 years boost there, I, I would target Chase Elliott. I think this is going to be a race he's been circling. I like Briscoe Busher and I like Bowman Bubba at 4-1. to one. I don't like Bowman Bubba and even money, but I'm talking you want like a longer shot, four to one Bowman Bubba isn't crazy. Mm-hmm. Now the problem is that's a little like last week's RFKs. You got two guys that are gonna run like seventh to thirteenth. So you need to get them both on the right side of that window. Um, but they're gonna be right there seventh to thirteenth. You'll be sweating a little bit, but I got a crazy question for you. Just let's just we haven't we haven't talked about this guy. He was a little quiet last week. Ty Gibbs was on fire. He was the talk last week. He was back to just okay. What's his Martinsville numbers look like? He's won here. here. Right? No? You don't want to talk about that? I'm not even going to entertain that with a response. <laughs> he was uh, – We should actually 18, go see who the club champion is at the uh, Texas Open down there and see if he's in the PGA event with the same idea. Well, this guy won the member guest. <laughs> He was the leader after three rounds, Steve. Oh, man, this guy was good. 18th, 18th, and 19th in his three starts here. Well, then I'm going to uh, – too bad you can't, like – could too bad you can't roulette it and be like, I'd like to bet him to finish 18th. <laughs> they should let you just oh, bet, be like, a specific position. Dude, that's a great idea. I would be broke. <laughs> Think about, like, the roulette. It works, too. There's 36 positions. You're like, I'm going to put $2 on 9th, $2 on 10th, $5 on 11th. <laughs> if it's so I think, payout, though. Oh, think about man. this, though. So I, when are we going to get live betting at the racetracks? That would be so awesome if you could get, like, a live. But the bet was, where is he going to finish in this stage? 1 through 36. Mm-hmm. You're like, ah, oh, Beep. Uh, who do we got in the Rick Ware cars? Normal colleague is Hemrick and Williams? Yes. Uh, I believe it's Williams, yeah. Uh, 
I think Rick Ware is the favorite, and they're measured that way. SHR versus RFK. SHR is the favorite. I think that's fair. HMS and JGR. HMS, the dog. Nope. Uh -uh. That's the bet. 40th anniversary. If that's the case, wouldn't you just take one of the either the drivers to win or like HMS to win? Uh, no, because, you know, Blaney could win or Logano could win. Yeah, but I'm saying plus 130, though. Like, are you going to – you're either – yeah, But it's basically it. it's a matchup. you got four against four. I would take plus 130 that the Hendrick car will finish in front of a, a Gibbs car. Okay. I mean, that's – I think that's I, – I think those odds are wrong. I think that should be like a minus 110, minus 110. That basically – tell you what that is saying. That is saying that they don't believe that the 9 and the 48 can do what they need to do. That's basically what they're saying right there. Although William Byer did stink there last fall – but I don't think he's going to stink again. Right? Don't you think that's what they're saying, Professor? I mean, this is really a bet on, like, the third and the fourth car favorites, I think. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I think any of, the, any of the Gibbs guys can win easily, right? Like, you wouldn't be surprised if any of them won. If, if Chase Elliott or Bowman won at this point, you'd kind of be a little surprised. Agreed. 23-11 against Trackhouse. Nah. Hmm. Let's get into the matchups. Blaney versus Bell. Bowman Bubba, Barry Reddick. Barry's a huge favorite. Is Reddick that bad here? It's terrible on short tracks. Logano Larson. Logano plus money over Larson. We know Larson's DNF streak. Like. Like he's going to run really good, but when he doesn't, when he stops running really good, it goes really bad. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad bet. Yeah, I, like that. I actually think that's a like plus money for Logano to outrun Larson is pretty interesting. Yeah, I like that. We haven't talked at all about groups. Not a big groups guy, Tim's. Well, hold on. I'm can not. We st can we stay on I, uh, on matchups for a second? I usually we don't see the matchups are very close in the numbers, but. We're seeing uh, Gregson plus 165 versus Briscoe, and then I see Bush 210 versus Logano. Is it with the, how long those odds are? Is it worth any of those? I mean, you're, I just don't see the eight out running the 22 if they're both running. I guess the point is, I think the odds are fair. I would take the long shot and hope for chaos because what we learn about the predictor is while it's very good for 70%, 30% is unpredictable. And that's why we watch, right? Because it's freaking nuts. So if I was going to take any of those, no chance I'm taking a matchup at minus 150, 170, minus 200. No way. Um, I just don't believe it. Because, you know, you flat tires, a million things that could happen. That's just my opinion. Tim's, you're the gambler. Well, I mean. Yeah. That's my whole strategy with, with matchups is just take the plus money and hope somebody has a bad day, chaos happens. I mean, I can't. I, can't, I, would, I even hate taking minus 115 both ways, but I will if it's head-to-head. -head, but, like, and the guy, I think the guy's better. But I love plus money matchups. That's all I, that's all I target. Now, listen, do the odds make sense? Yes, Briscoe is 10th on the predictor, and Gregson's 23rd on the predictor. But, you know, what we don't know, and this is what makes us, we don't know what they're developing over there. We don't know Gregson's approach. You know, that's all classified, not classified, but my point is that's like non-public domain information. Like, we don't know what setup Gregson's going with. Maybe he's going with Briscoe's setup direct. Like, like, those are the unknowns. That's what makes racing so exciting because, like, in golf, you know, a guy isn't going to get a new set of irons and be like, oh, man, that guy's Tiger Woods all of a sudden, right? Like, I know they change information, and maybe a guy will change a putter. Rory just went to go see Butch Harmon. So do we think Rory all of a sudden is going to be the guy? Like, like we're – I what do I believe? Here's what I believe. I think in these 36 drivers, there are 10 that are elite and I think a lead is more than the ability to press the pedals. It's also to manage 500 laps. It's experience. It's, it's, it's a global approach to the weekend. They're elite because they've done it, because they've proven it, because time and time again they put themselves in position. I think Joey Logano is elite. 
He's a two-time champ, right? He is going to run his car to what his car is worth. Noah Gregson was elite on Saturdays, and he is beginning his Sunday career, right? Kind of a rebirth of his Sunday career. So in 10 years, do we say, man, Noah was elite. We didn't see it coming. I don't, I don't know. So it's hard to say. But, but do I have him up against Briscoe? Do I have a Briscoe as elite? I don't yet. Yeah, I know he's been a winner, but eh. So I, I think Noah has just as good a chance of running as good as Briscoe, right? The numbers would say the odds are right. I would take plus money. Russ, are there any other matchups that you think the books have it wrong compared to your stuff? Well, no, because no. he freaking gave him to the books. <laughs> well, the answer is no. The, the, the briscoe Barry one is the biggest thing to me. That, that's, that's the biggest miss to me. There's a bet on the board, Briscoe versus Barry. Barry is the favorite. Briscoe at plus 105. I have to agree with the professor that Briscoe and Barry should be even, uh, even up. Like, He's been top 10 in every next-gen car at Martinsville. Here it is, folks. 43 minutes into the podcast. I, I'm not we went hold- through wins. No, 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 we no, went no, through no, no. top 10s. We talked about him earlier. I'm not holding this against – we. This is a matchup that we were going to the matchups to get to. It's okay. not like he was All a right. win bet. I'm boy. Got to defend Russ on this one. Yeah, that's the last time. The top five in both races last year, too. So that's why he's 10th on the predictor. Fair. What about Chastain and Reddick? Chastain minus 114, Reddick minus Chastain over Reddick all day and 16 yeah. times on Sunday at a short track against Reddick. Right, Professor? Yes. Yes, 100%. I mean, you are literally taking a bull to a bullfight. I mean, this is like, hey, man, this is the guy, right? If there's ever a guy to protect the curb, your big concern there is that he finally gets in, you know, protects so much that somebody ships him. That's Mm -hmm. your big concern for Ross Chastain. How about manufacturers? I think this is the most equal, let's just say in general, of anywhere we go, I think this is where the three manufacturers are most even. Just because I think SHR is going to run good here. So let's be honest. Well, here's what you got to do. Well, you're always going to have Hendrick and Chevrolet, and you're going to have Joe Gibbs and a, and a Toyota. So you're looking for some Ford help. I could put a Penske driver in victory lane, and I could put SHR drivers inside the top five or ten, never know what happens on a restart. So this is as even as I've ever seen it. Um, the Chevy 255 in the manufacturer bed, is that right? Or is that a typo? Let me check. That's got to be a typo. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah. There's Does no that, way Chevy oh. and Ford are both 255 over Toyota. God, please tell me I found the one bad typo on the sheet. <laughs> he was oh. the mountains were blue the day he typed this baby up. <laughs> which one do you look? Which one do you want? Manufacturer three way Toyota Chevy Ford Chevy is not plus 255. Winning manufacturer, Toyota minus 105, Ford plus 255, Chevy 255. Really? Wow. Then I like the Chevy bet there. I would agree. Yeah. Because here's the other thing. While the the Toyota's going to be good, don't get me. I'm not saying they won't be. Remember, there's not a whole lot of them. (laughs) You know. Well, look at Ford versus Chevy. Yeah. If you think it's HMS weekend. Like, that that's what I would take over. Oh, even I, if, if you really want to know how I would bet this, I would reduce my units, and I would have every Chevy bet 16 ways from Sunday, every Hendrick car bet 16 ways from Sunday, every Hendrick car bet in their matchup. And if I was wrong, I was wrong. But there's been too many NASCAR stories going to 40th. Let me tell you, how do you get motivated? How do you get the guy something who has everything? Well, Mr. Hendrick would love to win on his 40th anniversary race. And if you're that driver, you know your face is going on a mural somewhere there next to Jeff Bodine. Like, oh, yeah, I am all in chips sliding in on the Hendrick weekend. And now the counter is, if you're Denny Hamlin, you'd love to beat him. (laughs) I'm all in, though. I actually think we haven't talked about him, but I'm going to tell you who's going to win this weekend. Well, well, hold on. 47 minutes into the the (laughs) podcast. (laughs) What would be the number one, Tim's? Yes. Hendrick wins on the 40th anniversary with the most popular driver in NASCAR. 
I could see it. I could see it. I said he was going to be motivated. What else? Racing's good. How about Final Four? Where are we at on that? Let's talk about it. Ooh. Come on, Tim's. UConn. UConn, baby. I don't think they've lost a spread in the past two tournaments. So it's you've 11 got a and a half, you've got a UConn I agree. Ticket, I think we're right? all on UConn. How about the other side of the bracket? Well, hold on a second. You've got a winning ticket, though, right, for UConn? I have a future bet on UConn, yeah, to win the championship. Yeah. Got a pre-tournament. So we're looking pretty good there. I bet him last year, too, so back to back. Trav, what do you have? Some seventh guy for missing three <laughs> three-pointers with your crazy pro? Like, what do you got? You got you're the most degenerate prop better i've ever met in my life we read that article about the ncaa trying to cut out props i thought trav was going to drive there personally and talk to him he was going to indianapolis he was talking to the ncaa so i'm looking at uh for the nc state purdue game i'm looking at a player prop that i'm probably i'm working on right now dj horn 10 plus points zach ed 20 plus points zach ed 10 plus rebounds Muhammad Diara, eight plus rebounds and dj burns four assists mm-hmm. i'm a little nervous on the uh the DJ Burns assist because he can kind of be hit or miss at times. Oh, no, no. See, I love that bet. So it's I want DJ Burns under points on that game. So it's plus 404, that bet right there I have. So what is DJ Burns over under on point? Here's why I like it. Because DJ Burns, first of all, love him, smiling, great hands, big man, all that stuff. Guess what? The guy he's going to have to try to spin around is seven foot whatever, five. Wingspan, seven foot four. That's what he is, Professor. Is that what I got? I mean, that's Zach Eady's wingspan. So, so my point is, DJ Burns, I'm not trying to knock him. It's been a fun run. But he's going to spin, think he's clear, and put that little left-handed floater up there, and Zach Eady's going to swat it to the third row and be like, yeah, man, welcome to the big man. You want DJ under point. So 14 and a half is the line. Under. I can get you plus money for it. It's under. Absolutely under. DJ Burns is the NC State's pathway to win is not through DJ Burns this week. Mm-hmm. It just isn't. I'm sorry. He cannot score on Edie. Isn't oh, happening. I also have in the uh, Bama UConn game, I've got Donovan. This is where Klain. you put the asterisks in that we are not basketball experts. <laughs> yeah. This is purely with our hearts, but go ahead. I've got Donovan Klingon uh, mm-hmm. over nine and a half rebounds. Mark Sears over three and a half rebounds. Mark Sears over three and a half assists. Aaron Estrada, one three. And Tristan Newton. Uh, under two and a half threes. I mean, I like got, at plus eleven hundred. It was with a, a bonus five dollar bet. It's Purdue UConn in the final. That's what I think, right? I think so. I think NC State covers though. You're on the football school. Uh, <laughs> NC, we'll State? NC State a NC football State's school. A football is... school. Oh jeez. Well, what are they? Okay, you're on the engineering school. school? <laughs> I mean, think about this. I just want you to think about this. NC State Purdue. There is the, the math SAT score average of those two schools. I mean, these guys right here, they got an algorithm. Run. They already know the finishing score somewhere. I mean, they got an algorithm running in the background. This is like, I mean, engineering against engineering. Do we have any, um, do you have any golf bets this week? Billy Ho with his Taylor Swift fearless bracelet on his left hand that his wife made him. Billy Ho, top 20, plus 154. That's good because I'm not. Uh, I thought about placing Billy Ho, and I didn't. I also sent you a text to confirm. Uh, <laughs> he did. He said, are you on any of these guys before I bet it? Because I can't be with you. So I have Jordan Spieth, Hideki Matsuyama, and Corey Connors to make the cut. Jordan Spieth won it in 21. Corey Connors has won it twice in the last four years. I like Hideki. He's a solid player. Uh, I woke up, this, woke up this morning and said, let's make another one. Rory, Harris English, and Matt Fitzpatrick also to make a cut. I don't love that one. I like your win. first one. I don't like that one. You know, we got a little win, one, little win, a little money now to fire off for the Masters next week. Why aren't you going to be watching on Sunday, Trav? What do you got Sunday? Uh, I'll be at a little place called Augusta National. When do you leave? Uh, Saturday. Man. I'll be there for... We should days. talk some Master Props right now. Who do you like, Trav? I like Justin Thomas, new caddy. He's definitely missing the cut. Faden Justin <laughs> Thomas. Wait, I thought, but is this kind of like a new crew chief? Nope. It doesn't that doesn't apply, Tim's. Does that not work? No, I feel rules? like new caddy means it's going bad, and you need to <laughs> yeah. reset. So I think that's the opposite effect. New caddy, no, not making somebody a cut. that could. See. I got a real question. Oh, I got a serious question. 
Do we think, I don't want to say on purpose, do we think Scotty Scheffler went up there and whacked the putt and had a miss and was like, oh, second, I get to go home? Because that's what it looked like. No. So here's, just follow me for a minute. Scotty Scheffler is, he, he's, he's on fire. He has a, what do we want to call it, Tim's a five and a half, six footer? Yeah. To tie and go to a playoff. The gentleman leading, I can't remember his name, but this win for him is a monster. It's exemption for two years. It, it's life changing for this person he's playing against. Scheffler almost looked like, like, I don't think he missed it on purpose. But I think he was like, this putt's either going in or it isn't. I'm not reading it from the other side 16 different ways. If I miss it, great for this guy. Like, Scheffler seems like such a nice guy. He walked up there. He said, ah, I think right edge. Tap. Oh, broke too much. Second, I'm out of here. See you in Augusta. And, like, he, like, yeah. I don't know. That's what it felt like on TV. Also, like, if you want to win the Masters, that's what you want to focus on. Right. You're really going to win three tournaments in a row? Or how, however many he was in. I yeah. mean, that's that's tough to do. And Guys, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard on this podcast. No. It's You're a, saying it's, that a player doesn't want to win because it might ruin what they're going to do next. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that he didn't grind over that putt like he would have if he hadn't won the last three tournaments and the Masters wasn't two weeks and that the guy was going to get exemption. I think that deep down he's such a nice guy. He was like, eh, let's see if it goes in. Yeah. Every media member would have asked him, can you win three in a row? Can you win three in a row? I don't know. They're going to ask him if he can that. win a second Masters. Like, that's what better are we than doing here? They're going to ask he, everybody that. You're saying that he felt bad for a guy, so he missed a putt. That he's, no. Still they want like to win. Million. Ball knows, man. It's not like he's going to have to play an extra round for the playoff the following day or something. He had to play an extra hole if he would have been in the playoffs. He goes home the same night on his private jet to his mansion in Texas either way. $570,000 or something like that for second, and it brought his cost per event down. Finished second, and it hurt his cost for per event for the year. Uh, I'm talking about names that I like though for Masters. Two names that popped off, uh, Brooks, Kepka, and Xander Shoffley. What's our live appearance? Do we think Liv's coming in there to prove something again? Or do you think their lack of stacked field, like, that's I, I don't know the answer. You guys tell me. Yeah, they're coming in there to prove something, but the only problem is, like, Brooks is really the only one. Like, Cameron Smith was up there, but overall, like, the live roster is not, like, they, they posted a thing, like, ready for the green jacket, and everyone's making fun of it. Like, no, Brooks is the one that's leading the way, and everyone else is going to kind of, like, you know. How many rounds does Tiger play? Two. Oh, he did What's the, the miscut odds on Tiger? Let's be honest. I don't even think they're out yet. What? Oh, man. So here's the question I have, and I don't know the answer to this. It's a serious question. Is a miscut and a WD the same? No. That's my fear. My fear about the miscut is what if he withdraws on Saturday, or I'm sorry, Friday, because he's, you know. I don't know how they pay that out. Check that out, people. All right. We're going to talk some more uh, Masters uh, what are you gonna do, Trav? You gonna just you gonna hand the reins to Tim's next week while you're down in Augusta? Because I yeah. know you're not. We're gonna, we're just gonna let Tim's. Uh, I gotta take pick the up lead. the. So, line. Trav, this is what I want from the. I don't need any Masters attire. I have some enough Augusta stuff. Here's what I really want. I want some Mastic plast, Masters plastic cups, like the cheap ones, like the disposables. Oh, <laughs> like here, like these. Hold on. I mean, you know he's going to drink 65 beers. Just save the cups. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Can those? You get some of... Yeah. I only, have get... 82... I only have 82 of them. Can you get me a couple? Yeah. All right. That's what I want. That way I can sit on my back deck looking at my grass, sipping out of a Master's Cup, dreaming. There's nothing better than a beer out of a Master's Cup. Or I don't a know. Drink. Never been. Never attended the Master's. Really? Nope. Nobody will invite me. Russ, Tim's, you, uh, do you guys need anything from there? I'll take a cup. Yeah, I'll take You want a golf shirt? or? I, I Maybe you can only get Masters gear at the Masters. Yeah, you can't get it online. That's the – it makes it I, so I think amazing. the cup's a bigger flex. I don't know. I think yeah. a cup is a bigger flex. I like a cup. It's yeah. understated. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like, hey, man, let me pour your beer. <laughs> Boop. Oh, my Masters cup. Here you go. It tastes like winning. <laughs> well, guys – 
we got a lot to talk about next week, Masters, but that's a week ahead. Right now it's Martinsville. The predictor was on fire last week. We are going to see if it can go back to back. The professor, he didn't flex too much on this pod. He had to explain it twice because the first time was so confusing we didn't know what he meant. We'll see if he can convey that better. And next week, mom's away. The kids will play. Travis is going to Augusta to hang out with his buddy Marty Smith. So me, Tim's, and the professor are going to hold down the four. Get all your bets in, Matt. Oh, not Masters. Martinsville. Martinsville, short track racing. Get all your bets in and may all your bets.